All right, hey guys, welcome back to another wonderful episode of the Bourbon Jamaican. We got a special lineup for you today. Of course, we got Brady and dropping nukes, capital D, capital N. Nukem is a little bit uh, struggling today. You know, we went out to Vegas, show some love to the 49ers, but they didn't show me no love. <laughs> they didn't show them no love. It was a, it was a great experience. Um, ran into a lot of different celebrities, ran into a lot of different uh, current and former players. Um, got to see some of my childhood idols, you know, I, I got within an arm's reach of Jerry Rice and Dan Marino and Emmett Smith, just to name a couple, and um, got to spend time, some time with the in-laws and, and celebrate a birthday for my father-in-law. So uh, even though we didn't come back with the, with the ship, we, uh, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves in Vegas and the Super Bowl experience yeah. is a is once in a lifetime experience. Once in a lifetime type of thing and definitely at the top tier of uh sporting events I've par participated in in my lifetime. Alright, well today Brady wanna to talk about our lineup. Yeah, so we're gonna do the EH Terra lineup out of Buffalo Trace. Um just the four we have. We don't have we got the main lineup, we don't have any of that tornado survivor shit nah. so we got the uh, small batch at 100 proof the single barrel at 100 proof the barrel proof that's this year's batch it's 131.1 proof and then we have the straight rye at 100 proof um the straight rye is the only one that's not the same mash bill as the other three um it's believed to be a 95.5 rye but buffalo trace has not disclosed that so we'll see i've not had the straight rye all right, well, we're starting from our left, your right, and this is the, uh, is that the small batch? Yes. So we're starting with the small batch. Right off the bat, the notes are pretty good. Again, a lot of, like, almost like brown sugar, a little bit of caramel. It's a sweet full delight. Yeah. Real fruity. Yes. I think it's pretty sugary, a little fruity. You were saying before we poured these that you normally get tobacco. Mm -hmm. Well, most of these on that small batch is just caramel and tobacco to me. Yeah, the finishing on the, on the small batch is a, is heavy tobacco. It's it's very sweet um, at first, but it gives you that that last finishing note that I always pick up is just a tobacco note and um, the the vanilla. You know, you first initially you know take a sip of it and you get that vanilla and sweet note but then it just it it's it hits you with that that tobacco little burn but nothing too bad like it's not overpowering nothing like that it's it, it's inviting it's a it's a true sipper like you invite your friends over and and just sip on this all night long definitely a cigar night kind of bourbon and it, it the burn actually like stays it doesn't go away right off the bat like you, it kind of stays in your mouth and kind of tantalize the tongue a little bit, kind of open it up. Yeah, it's got a, it's pretty viscous. It's got a nice long finish to it. Yeah, it's got that oily coating to it. It, it once it once it hits the tongue and stuff like that. But every time uh, I've had I've had that bottle for quite some time. You and it's just it. The labels faded on. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I noticed that. I was like, what? the. Uh, also, something to mention too as we go through this, I guess, is the small batch, the MSRP's uh, $45. Secondary around here, they're normally, what, 80 to 100 bucks? Yeah. And then we'll go through them as we go down the line. Um, but these are prices here in Northern Kentucky. I'm sure they'll be different elsewhere. Yeah, I guess depending on availability. So the single barrel, I know it's one of Chris's favorites. I enjoy it a lot. I've only had, I've tasted two different ones. Um, they're not in each stated, but they uh, they are are normally pretty different compared yeah. to the small batch, in my opinion. Yeah, I think a single barrel. I got a single barrel back here. I think that's a. I ended up getting that as a, a store pick. Store pick single barrel. This to, I don't know why, but this one to me smells like a donut. Yeah. Well, if if you. Watched our video a couple weeks ago when uh, we celebrated being in dry January. I uh, I headed to uh, a bubblegum finish 
for our smell <laughs> to uh, the George T. Stag, and you know these are aged in the same warehouse as it as the Stag, and uh, I do get it on this one. And you get it like I I get a little bit of bubble gum. I get the cream like the vanilla, you know, note to it as well. And um, when I picked up my single barrel. I, I went through half the bottle on the first night because I just couldn't put it down. Like I really, I really enjoyed it. It has been one of my favorite bourbons up to this point that I've been able to taste. So I'm excited to taste, uh, see if there's any similarities or differences between mine and Brady's. I, had, I told Brady uh, at work, I was like, I should have brought my single barrel so we could compare them side by side. That might be a good blind to do, blind two single barrels see if there's any difference or consistencies between them. The finish comes and goes though. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's disappointing. Like, I felt like we had a long lingering finish on the small batch as opposed to this single barrel. Like the single barrel, it, it hits you with that, that creamy, you know, nice taste. I get a hint of tobacco in this, but nowhere near the note that I picked up in the small batch. But it it just comes and goes like that's kind of yeah. disappointing, honestly. I'm glad you said that. I was gonna say the same thing. The finish on this is like half the length of the small batch. Yeah, yeah. that's strange. It's it's also kind of a one noter to me. It's it's like there's it's, like a basil. It's like, like a spice almost. It's almost like a dough. Like I said, I smelt donut. I get a little bit of a doughiness, like a sugary breadiness, and then I get a night like a, a black pepper, and then it's just gone. Yeah, agree. It you know. Um, we felt the same way, like there wasn't a, a real long finish with the Joy C Stag either. Yeah. You know, true. it was there, but it just it didn't it didn't grab you by the chest and hold you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's that, very welcoming. I don't drink the small batch all that often and for some reason I go to the I go to Eagle Rare a lot more than I do E. H. Taylor, but I every time I have a glass of E. H. Taylor here, I'm like, man, I need to drink my bottle more often. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're getting ready to hit the third glass onto the next. Right off the bat, just visually, it, you can tell that it has a little bit more char because the color is so much darker. You can smell it too. It's got a little of a smoky note too. Yeah. Oh, this is this one definitely smells like a truffle. It has I blame like Brady. All I can <laughs> smell is fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, you too, fat. All I can smell is a, a melon when I put it to the nose now because of Brady. I was gonna say, I was just about to say, <laughs> I when I first cracked my E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, Chris and I got one on the same day and I text Chris and I was like, did you open yours yet? And he said, yeah. I said, all I smell is cantaloupe. And <laughs> smelling it's it like now, I, all I get is cantaloupe. Yeah. That's all I get. I smell the truffle. I get a I get a little bit of a caramel note, yeah. but it is like I've never gotten a melon note on a bourbon before, and it's really unique. Oh, this one is very like a oily, but then it's almost like a birthday cake. It's yeah. This was uh this is how bourbon was made before the prohibition days, uh, and so it it gives you that sense of history. It takes you back to where. Them, uh, them hardened guys was actually taking bourbon. Um, I still haven't been able to get up off the melon note at all. It's been there ever <laughs> since. But I mean, you can tell, guys. Like from the time I picked it up, it's it's been a go-to. It's it's the best find of 2024 in my opinion so far, based off of what I've been able to grab so far. And um, that's been what three weeks? Three weeks. Well, two weeks. Yeah, I've been able to drink bourbon now. What's today? The 15th. So I've been able to drink for two weeks. And so that's <laughs> been two weeks, you know, and I haven't, I get a little buzz and I'm like, let's pour us up a glass, you know? And uh, it's been, it's been very, very good. It's killer. I put mine up against Stag, uh, batch 23A that we compared the George T. Stag and I bonded at home real quick. I just did like a corner outs. And um, it, this is just so complex, and the finish is so long compared to stag, in my opinion. Oh, well, one and two, so small batch and barrel proof, the, like I said, the burn just kind of stays in your mouth and kind of open your taste buds. So 
even after you drink it and you get all that salivating and all that flavor is just mixing it's like you're tasting different notes on yep. different parts of your tongue so it's just like one taste so it, as you sit there and let it kind of marinate you're tasting all different kind of notes just on different parts of the tongue yeah you picked up picked up any of the rye characters i was uh i was looking earlier and they everybody was referred to the rye character within the the barrel proof i get a little bit of a I, I do get a little bit of the rye yeah the the methanol and stuff like that i get a, a slight taste of that and uh i definitely pick up the pepper there um funny because you know my grandparents they always put salt and pepper on their melons Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you do you do get that warm kentucky hug some they might be a little bit from the front or the back I'm not sure how it works but you definitely get that warm that real warm hug and it just stays there it's not like it comes and goes it's just it's consistency it's pretty good well that leaves us with the straight rye i've not had the straight rye i know you guys have i've been pretty excited yeah. to try this one well the straight rye is a fresh crack i had it up there and it seemed like these guys have been forcing me more and more to quit letting these collect dust. This and is where the meme and the, <laughs> and the gif pops up with a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, leave, leave, leave a me. comment. Tell yeah. this guy it's it's not a collection. Uh, yeah. It's a selection. It's a selection. It's not a collection. And I like can we it. get a hand clap in the, in the comment section for our, for for the the yeah. Jamaican to be opening and cracking some of the, some of his uh, trophies. Yeah, so it, was a, it was a stag last time that we were through the uh, straight rye. I realized too we were talking about price earlier and I forgot. So the small bat or the single barrel MSRP is sixty ish dollars, but uh second hand or second market you're looking at least two they're $2. about two hundred here. So it it's not really bad, but at the same time, you know, if you like it you'll get it. If not, it is what it is. Uh, I paid MSRP for the small batch. I definitely paid secondary market for the barrel proof. Um, I paid I, I paid below secondary market for the uh, single barrel that I got. Um, and I haven't I haven't found the straight rye at a decent enough price. I just found yesterday at Star Liquor in Florence a single barrel for two seventy five. There's no way in hell I'm paying two seventy five for a single barrel. Well I guess I struck gold on this straight rye. It was what eighty nine? You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the straight rye from when I see them they're only about one fifty to one seventy five. Damn um, yeah so I, I definitely got it at MSRP but you said the uh We picked up, I picked up the straight rye and my single barrel the same day. Yeah. And uh I went with a single barrel that day because at the at that point in time I, I wasn't too high on the rise. Um, but with that being said, you know we opened up the straight rye Yates yeah, Taylor today. Be on the lookout for a future video. We'll be opening up his Parker's Heritage. Oh shit! <laughs> I need to hide that one. That one's going in in like the safe or something. Coming like soon at the next video. But so you never know. Some some. I'll tell you now, if, if something big comes up where we need to celebrate, I wouldn't mind opening it. So, on the nose. Or we can blind it with Brady's 10-year uh, mixtures. <laughs> you just got a backup too, didn't you? <laughs> you can do it with a 10-year rye, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do it with the mixtures. You hear, hear it. I just get lavender on the nose. It's like a lavender soap. Eh, yeah. Yeah. It's real floral. We're gonna we're gonna drink this and start blowing bubbles, guys. <laughs> wow! So surprisingly, for a ride, it is all three has been different. Which I would say the small batch and the foolproof has the same kind of uh, burn to it. But for all of these being a uh, over a hundred proof, this is pretty good. I think this one probably drinks the lowest proof out of the four, but we are coming off the barrel proof as well. It to me is really thin, mm -hmm. and it's extremely floral. But it, uh, it still it still has. I would say like a it, you can introduce it to anybody, so it'd be almost like a beginner's type bourbon, something that somebody they'll still get the burn, but at the same time they'll get to the experience the different notes. So with the rye, you always get like 
your rice spice, but then there's always something added into it. So whether it's you getting a little bit of char or even a little bit of the uh, caramel taste to it. I feel like it's a hundred dollar bottle. Yeah. I would pay a hundred bucks for it. It's got a little bit of a citrusness to it. That's what I was going to say. Like an orange. Yeah. Said it. I get more citrus than anything on it. I get it a little bit, but I get so, I get a punch of that floral taste up front. And it's just a huge throw off for me. I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I, yes, I love a citrus note. Yeah. I get it on a lot of wild turkey stuff. Brady's a nutty, a nutty kind of guy. He likes the nuts. So if you have anything, uh, Russell's or uh, Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill. That's Brady's me right there. About that. And, and the, the, the Bookers. The Bookers is probably his favorite because they're all nutty. Yeah, but, and I like rye, but I lean more towards a Kentucky rye, that 51, 60% somewhere in there. Uh, you know what you're picking up? I just had to reference something. You're what? picking up the deal. No, There's I know, I know, I hate dill. I know it's not dill. My buddies are gonna laugh when they watch this because if I taste something, I get dill. I just hand, I just push the glass <laughs> away. I'm not getting dill. There's some dill in there. You're gonna love now, it. Now that you said it, that's all I smell. It's like, <laughs> it's like the melon thing. <laughs> I'm on my gooby. For me, <laughs> but for me, that's all I taste now. I'm all right. Sorry. So if you I'm love it, fine. open it up. It's no. okay. I don't like the dill. I think I think it's it has some good aspects to it, and if you're looking for something different, sure, yeah, I'm get I'd buy it if it's hundred bucks or less. But I wouldn't pay secondary for it. I've had many many ryes that yeah. I like better than that. You know, I know that we didn't blind these or anything like that. We just kind of ran through them, but um, it hurts my heart to say that the single barrel finished last for me on this. Yeah. It really did, and uh, that's been one of my favorite pours from E.A. Taylor up to this point. Um, yeah. The barrel proof, I mean, coming in at 131, it uh, it's it, just so good. It poops on all these, yeah. and <laughs> if you can find it at a decent price, yeah. well, the, the small the small batch isn't too far behind. No, nah, that I was actually, you know, the small batch is my second favorite today. Uh, yeah. it, I would it, agree with that. 100%. You know, I I was definitely. I haven't gone back to my small batch. My small batch has probably been open for going on a year now. And uh, I haven't gone back to it in quite some time. But I'm surprisingly, uh, I would say, the single barrel just didn't hug me like it should have. And and the, the, the lingering finish on the small batch was there. And uh, I mean, the rye, I would honestly put that ahead of, of the single barrel today. So. Yeah. Well, there you have it. I hope you all enjoy the video. And if you've had any of these, please drop in the comment what your thoughts are and what you think about them. And tell us what you think. If we if we hit the nail on the head or if you disagree with what we think they're worth or whatever the case is, talk to us, communicate. We'd love to hear back from you all. If you're new to the channel, Please subscribe, like, and share, and we'll definitely hit the notification bell for new content. Go and check out our previous videos. We actually did an E.H. Taylor series with another lineup of E.H. Taylor's. I think it was minus the, uh, the barrel proof. Correct. Uh, but tell us what you think. And uh, go check out Dropping Nukes' little uh, great adventure for the Super Bowl. He dropped a couple things on his, his page, so go go over there and uh, check him out. But with that, I didn't post a video of me crying, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, man. Peace out. Thanks.